Hello, welcome to the Dam Breach tutorial for Riverflow 2D. This tutorial illustrates how to incorporate a dam breach simulation into an existing Riverflow 2D project using the QGIS interface. As shown on this slide, the dam is approximately 1,575 feet long. The breach center is 550 feet from the right margin of the dam. The opening of the breach has the following final dimensions, a top width of 160 feet, a bottom width of 100 feet, and the final breach height is 30 feet. The procedure to model the dam break involves the following steps. Open an existing Riverflow 2D project, create a dam breach layer and draw a line that represents the transverse axis of the dam, generate the mesh, run the model, and then check the results files. You can find the tutorial files on your computer in the directory shown. On the project menu, click Open and browse to the existing project dambreach.qgs. This project already contains the domain outline layer, the digital elevation model in raster format, outflow conditions are set to free outflow in the lower left boundary, and an initial condition of water surface elevation is set behind the dam. Create the template for the dam breach layer. In the Riverflow 2D toolbar, click on the New Template Layer button. In the dialog, select Dam Breach and click OK. Edit the newly created Dam Breach layer by going to the Layers panel and selecting Dam Breach. In the Digitalization toolbar, click on the Toggle Editing button. A pencil icon will appear in the Dam Breach layer, indicating that the layer is in edit mode. Using the Add Feature tool of the Digitalization Toolbar, draw the line that defines the dam axis. Keep in mind that the breach centroid is measured from the first vertex of the dam line. In this example, it occurs 550 feet away from the left margin of the dam. The dam axis is drawn from the top of the channel to the bottom, along one side of the polygon that defines the initial water surface elevation. Right click to finish the line. Once finished with drawing the dam axis, a window to input the parameters of the dam breach appears. Input the information as seen on screen and click the check fields button. Click the Temporal Evolution tab and click on the Import Dam Breach File button. Select the Breach1.txt file in the project folder. Click OK to close. There are two more options for failure types when setting up a dam breach. For this tutorial, we will not use them. However, we can show the differences here for future reference. The second failure type is an overtopping breach. This breach requires additional parameters for proper setup as seen on screen. Keep in mind that this failure type will not need a temporal evolution file to be specified. The third failure type is a piping breach. This requires for all parameters to be supplied by the user as seen on screen, and also does not allow for a temporal evolution file to be specified. Go to the Riverflow 2D toolbar and click on Generate Tri Mesh button. This will generate a mesh adapted to the domain outline cell size parameter and the dam breach line cell size parameter. As you can see, the resulting mesh shows more detail along the dam axis. Now we need to export the files to the Riverflow 2D model. In the Riverflow 2D toolbar, click on the Export to Riverflow 2D button. We make sure that the correct DEM is selected 
and a suitable name is given for the project. The defaults are suitable for this exercise. Click OK button and the export process will begin. Once it is finished, Riverflow 2D will be loaded with the dambreach.dat file. After exporting the files, the Hydronia data input program is loaded with the project file. Review the control data and click Run Riverflow 2D. I will not save any changes in this example. However, you may need to save changes if any parameter was adjusted. A window will appear indicating that the model has started running. The window that Riverflow 2D presents while running the model shows simulation time information, volume conservation error, the total input and output discharge, as well as other parameters as execution progresses. We will speed through this portion of the simulation. Now that the model has finished, we can click the close button. The command line execution window should indicate that it will close in a few seconds. It is now okay to manually close the window or wait until it does so automatically. We will not save any changes. To review some of the output data, we will open a file explorer window and look through the project folder for a file with the extension .dambreachh. This file contains the hydrograph for the dam breach. When prompted, select Notepad or your preferred text editing tool to view the contents. Spend some time to review the output data to see the details of the simulation. Back in QGIS, we can easily create an animation of the results to view it in real time. Go to the Riverflow 2D toolbar and click the animation icon. A panel will appear under the Layers panel on the left side. In the Select Layer drop-down, select Depth and click Add Layer. Click OK to keep the default output range. Once loaded, disable any layers that we do not want to see during the animation. Click the play button to see the animation in the map window. We can also export what we have on the map window to a movie file. Click the export video button. We will lower the speed so we can see each time step and select the folder and file name to save the animation. Click OK to export the video. Once the file is ready, we can open it from the File Explorer to view the results. This concludes the Dam Breach tutorial. Thank you for watching.